Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Sandy Goldberg, the founder of a Silver Lining Foundation, and we're so glad you're with us on this extremely cold, but somewhat better, better. Chicago night. Well, again, another segment of Silver Lining Foundation, whose mission, our mission, is to ensure access and treatment options and timely testing for individuals who are concerned about cancer, and certainly providing cost-free mammograms for women who are uninsured and underinsured. And I'm very glad to welcome back our guest, who, if we can get her, comes on once a, se <laughs> once a season, Patty Sheehan. Patty Cagney Sheehan. Right. Why do I always do that? I don't know. Too many words. It's my pal, Patty. Okay, <laughs> let's right. call it that. A certified mastectomy fitter. Mm -hmm. uh, and you started, actually, Second Act, didn't you? I did. Uh, I identified the need for a cancer recovery boutique in the city because they were all located in the suburbs and it seemed that that was something we needed for the women in the city to come to for their uh, aftercare products after they've had breast surgery. Now, you and I have known each other for quite some time, and when we met 87 zillion years ago, um, you you were in marketing, weren't you? I, I mean, what, what influenced this shift in your career? Well, yes, I was in advertising for almost 30 years, and then my mother was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, and I took her to get a wig in the suburbs. And that was when I realized that there is no place in the city that does the whole, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a mastectomy boutique that carries wigs and mastectomy bras and all of the products that you need after you've had breast surgery. So I just decided to make a switch, got out of advertising, got trained, became a certified mastectomy fitter, and then opened Second Act and got that accredited by Medicare so it is the only accredited mastectomy boutique in downtown Chicago. That's, that's great. Now, let me remind our viewers, please, that this is a live call-in show. And if you have any questions for Patty or myself, please feel free to call us at the number on the bottom of your screen, 312-738-1060. And uh, Patty, uh, uh, what exactly is a certified mastectomy fitter? Well... I'm the person that can do what Oprah says we all need. I can fit somebody in the right size bra. You know, that's so true. You you have some over here, and, and we're going to sort of do this step by step. Sure. In terms of the, as a breast cancer survivor, the one thing that I found to be a challenge, although, you know, less so now, thank heaven to, you know, people such as yourself, was to be able to find a bra that, frankly, made me feel after surgery when there were certainly changes in my body that I didn't have to wear something white or beige if I didn't want to and, right. and something frankly that would fit me mm -hmm. that would fit me and that's why there's such a wide range mm -hmm. um, so we have for instance if you're an animal lover we have everything from leopard this is my favorite one to zebra you didn't see zebra no, I didn't last see year the zebra. zebra's I didn't new see the zebra um, some really nice lacy covered ones. Oh, that's great. And then we even have sets. So for all of the ladies who are accustomed to having their lingerie match, they can have their mastectomy bra and, and their, their matching panties and still look just as glamorous as they ever did. Now, show us, and, and what I'm going to do, I think, is put this on the overhead. Okay. So you can explain. Now, now for those of you... I, I want you to, I'm switching over to the overhead, and what you are doing, I'm going to make this so we can come out a little bit, and, and you can actually see the bra itself, is that you're seeing a bra that it's sort of, it's upside, it's upside down on your screen. Let me turn it around so it is like this. So we want to show you that this is an actual bra. It does have some, what do you call that, filler padding? Yeah, a, what foam, a foam cup. Okay, now I'm going to flip it back over again, because in this bra, there is a place, and I'm, I'm trying to stay out of the way here, for, for, the, for the prosthesis. For the prosthesis, which will fill in mm -hmm. where, if someone has had a mastectomy, that part of the, to give the illusion that tissue was there when it's not necessarily right. there. Okay, now what I'm going to, and I'm not real good at this, okay? So what I'm going to do, I just sort of shove it in, right? Yep. Okay, I'm I'm putting in the the there prosthesis and this is the prosthesis. There is this area here 
where you put the prosthesis in. And then now what I'm going to do is remove the bra and I'm going to show you what the prosthesis actually looks like. And let, let me make that a bit larger so you can see what it looks like. It mimics tissue. I'm coming back to us now. It, it, it mimics the feel of tissue. Right, and there's a couple things that are important about this. One is the weight. Yeah. Women think when you put it in their hand that it's heavy, but truthfully, these are designed to weigh the same as your breast. So one, if you've had like a mastectomy on one side and not on the other, that it balances out the weight. Right, and that's for health as much as it is for looks. Right. Because if you don't, you'll tend to lean and you start to have problems with your back, your neck, your shoulders. So it's important, and that's one of the reasons it's medically necessary. It's not just to be cosmetic so that you look like you have a breast, but it's to help keep you aligned and properly in shape. Well, you told me a story about a, a, a woman that you had met actually at a Silver Lining event, mm -hmm. and, and she was not a breast cancer patient, uh, was she? No, she just, um, her breasts were different sizes, and she couldn't find a bra that fit well, so I had her come in, and I did actually end up giving her a prosthesis because there's another item that's called a balance shaper. Now, whereas this one has all the fullness to it, yes, this Let one this. is a shell. Okay, so it's a very light shell. I'm going to put the two again on the overhead so we'll be able better to see it because I think this is very important for our viewers to see. Now this, that's the complete prosthesis. That replaces a breast. Okay, and, and you see the thicker aspect of it, at least I'm hoping you are mm -hmm. in terms of my ability to be able to do it. And this one here, that's called a balance shaper. And as you can see, it's hollow in the back. It's hollow in the back and it is significantly lighter. Right. So that's for someone whose breasts are no longer the same size and you want to get symmetry mm -hmm. so that they match. So for this woman, one breast was a full size to almost two sizes smaller than the other. Really? Whoa. So of course she couldn't find a bra right. at a regular store to right. fit. I put her in a prosthesis and then I put her in a mastectomy bra and the whole time I did the fitting I had to keep straightening her up because, because she, she had so started you. leaning and she didn't even realize it. So she was accommodating to mm -hmm. the fact that it was. And do you find that women's breasts do change as they age? Does Absolutely. That? I have probably six or seven, maybe ten different kinds of prosthesis, different shapes, different styles, because women's breasts do change over time and so you need to adjust it accordingly. But the good thing is, you know, we talk about this for women who are recent cancer patients. Right. But for women such as yourself, a great 10-year survivor, congratulations. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, you also, if you wanted to continue to wear a prosthesis, would want to get a new one right. regularly. Oh, yeah. So Medicare and insurance do pay for new bras every year and for new prosthesis every two years so that you don't have to keep wearing the same one five, six, ten years out. Now, um, does a woman need to have a, a prescription from a health professional to come into you? Or? She does. Uh, that's the only way insurance and Medicare will pay for it. And Sandy, I brought you a sample of what a prescription looks like. Okay. And I circled the things that are most important. Okay, and, and I think this is, this is really invaluable for, for women who need this sort of information. Again, let me try to align this as best as possible. Uh, what, what it says, and my apologies, you'll notice on your screen that there are certain items that are encircled in pink. They are the diagnosis code. What is an NP1? An NPI number is your uh. national provider index number, and you must have that. Every doctor, every health professional, right. including myself, must have that. Okay, and then of course the physician signature, an actual signature. Yes. Not a stamped one. And then dispense as medically necessary. And that means the particular item itself? Yes, that means that, this, as I was saying about the fact that the prosthesis has to be a specific weight for health reasons. So that explains that yes, this is not just cosmetic. This is for a medical reason. But there are intermediate bras that women go into post, you know, post-surgery. It's one kind, and then later on, it's another kind. Is, right. is, are those 
Did you bring any of those? I, well, what I brought actually was the first thing. We're kind of going backwards now here. Well, why not? But this is a post-surgery camisole. Okay. And let this me, is designed. Here, let me hold this up. Okay, it's a camisole like some of us wear. So sure. In, to have a smoother line, frankly. Right. But this is designed with pockets. And the point is that when you have a breast removed, you have a surgical drain that you wear for seven to ten days. Right. And these pockets will hold that drain. Ah, that's great. So you have this to wear home, and it takes care of your post-surgery needs. And it also zips in the front. Yes. Which is so tremendously important because sometimes, especially if you've had your lymph nodes mm -hmm. done or removed or checked or whatever word you want to use where that's concerned, then you can't move as, as easily as, right. as you might. Although the good news on that one is more and more doctors now are realizing that they can remove just the sentinel node right. or maybe only two or three lymph nodes. And if those are clear, you don't have to have the extensive surgery that you used to have. Now, I'm, I'm thinking about ancillary services as well. I mean, we're talking about the bras, we're talking about the inserts, but I see a tall, blonde, <laughs> very quiet individual yes. over here. And this is our friend, who shall we call her? Susie. Okay. And Susie is wearing a synthetic wig. It doesn't yeah. look synthetic to me. No, it, they make wonderful wigs now and you don't need to spend thousands of dollars. This one's a few hundred dollars. It can be styled, which used to be that you couldn't do that with synthetic wigs. You right. can use a little bit of heat on it. And the other great thing, I'm going to move Susie here for a minute and take her wig off, is this is what they call a hand-tied top. Let me, let me put it over here. We're all getting an education today in terms of here. All right. Okay. Now, we, so what am I pointing to? The very front. This? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is where your hairline is. And as you can see, it's very clear. Yeah. So you don't have a hard line like old gotcha. wigs used to have. Yeah. Then as you move further down to the cap, if you turn that over and just part the hair, you will see your hand under there. Huh. Yes, So it indeed. looks just like a scalp. Yes, it does. So now you can, can wear... Can you see that? Can you see that? Look, I'm moving my finger away, and now I'm putting my finger there. So it's actually the color of my flesh mm -hmm. and would be... Oh, this is fascinating. And this would be the color of the flesh of the person mm -hmm. that is wearing it. But, you know, you're right, because there used to be such a differential in terms of the not real hair mm -hmm. and the real hair. Is this more comfortable do you think to wear in terms of the heat aspect of it because I, I remember people saying I want to rip that thing off because my head feels like it's going to burn right um, it's lighter weight mm -hmm. so it is lighter to wear um, it's also nice because when someone comes in I fit them in a style that suits them yeah. and it remains that style forever you wash it you let it dry it's going to come right back to the exact same style so if you're going through chemotherapy, you're not feeling well. You don't want to be fixing your hair every day. Right. So you lose your hair, and then you have to mess with a wig besides. Yeah. So with a synthetic, you don't have to do that. You take it out, you just give it a good shake, huh. put it on, and you're right back where you and were the day before. Of, yeah, it's, it's fascinating, the changes. You know, I think to myself, I was diagnosed um, 10 and a half years ago. Uh, Actually, in April, it'll be 11 years now. And the differences in what is available now than what was available when I was diagnosed is like day and night. Mm -hmm. And my tendency is always to go back to the undergarments because <laughs> everything was beige and yes. everything was white. And, and I saw a very lovely cranberry number over there. Yep. Well, and now you can have a little camisole attached to the bra. Yeah, it's almost like a modesty panel. Right, yeah. because for a lot of women, depending on where their surgery scar mm -hmm. is, that's an issue for them. Um, but for other women who are brave enough and think they can do it, yes, you can still wear strapless. Mm -hmm. A lot of women are surprised. They figure they'll never be able to do that again. You know, I, the dress I wore at the gala, mm -hmm. that's strapless. There you go. That's real. But I have to tell you, it took me some time to get comfortable to be able to do that because I have a very visible scar. Right. Yours was higher up. Yeah, it was very high. Yeah. And, but then I figured, you know what? <laughs> Past a certain point, you know, I figured I'm okay. 
But but the issue I have to tell you about the hair to be able to do that. I didn't lose all my hair. I lost part of my hair. And the hair that grew I was having a terrible time with that. And but I didn't want to deal with the wig because they weighed like fifty two pounds or something. I think we have a caller now. Hello, caller. Hi, caller. Calling to see you where can I buy one of those wigs. Okay, what we're going to do, I'm going to give you a Silver Lining Foundation's phone number. You call me, and I will I will give you the information about Patty. And do you have a pencil and piece of paper available? Yes, I do. Okay, call us at Silver Lining, 312-345-1322. Okay, again, 312-345-1322. I got it. Good. Mm -hmm. And then we'll give you all of Patty's information. And uh, she'll be able to help you in terms of the wig. And, and I'm very glad that you called, caller, because, again, as a survivor, for me, I'm, I'm looking at the bras and I'm looking at the wigs. It fascinates me. Thank you so much for calling. Okay. Can I call now? Um, actually, if you call, um, call right about 630, and we'll oh. be able to give you the information, okay? Okay. Thank you. You're so welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You know the important thing, too, about wigs? Of course, everybody walks in and says, I want human hair. And I have a couple human hair wigs, and I can order them, so I show them that for comparison. But they're always surprised. So I want to encourage women who are going through this, don't be afraid to consider synthetic wigs. And you know what I'm thinking about also? I, I'm thinking about that a lot of us carry a lot of the stuff historically in our head, and we've been told that, that human hair wig is better. But that's... Not, not necessarily, because it's going to break off just like your own hair does. It's going to need to be taken care of. These have great uh, stability to them in terms of the style and the wearability of them. My other thing about wigs, hey, everybody out there, we need insurance to cover wigs. Okay. Here, let me move some of this so we have some of this away because I see that you have some more. Um, you have another very colorful item here. Yes. One of the best things you can do when you're recovering from surgery is to swim. You need to get the use of your arms and your muscles have to be rebuilt. Swimming is a great way to do it. They make swimsuits that hold mastectomy products. That's great. So this one has pockets just like the bra has a pocket. Just like I showed you before about how we slid that in. And so the prosthesis just goes right into the pocket and stays put. That was my next question. I could imagine jumping in the pool and my left one went to the left <laughs> right. through the air and my right one went to the right. Nope. So that's the great thing about the way the pockets are made. They slip right in the same way they do into the bra. They stay in place. Although we do recommend when you get out of the pool, give yourself a little hug. Yes. To make sure everything's make sure everything in, place. in place. The way it <laughs> the way it should be in place. That's for sure. But you know, again, I think that women are becoming more I'm going to use the word, there'll be more advocates for themselves than before. Mm -hmm. I think once we get over the shock of the diagnosis, do you have that when people, when women walk in that they just don't know what to do or, you know, you're kind of in a, so petrified by the whole process? Yes, I think the one thing I hear most often is women apologizing that they don't know what to ask and they don't know what to expect. And I, of course, want to put them at ease because who would know what to ask or what That's to expect? It. You never That's intended it. to go through this. No. So it's my job to help you understand what you're facing and what products are available. This is why I encourage every woman who is diagnosed and knows she's going to have surgery, please see a certified mastectomy fitter before your surgery. I had a woman come in just today who told me she was so thrilled that she came in for a consultation before her surgery it makes a big difference. because it helped her understand what she was facing. And, and uh, you know, I always say that it it can be the not a positive news but at least if i know what to expect that makes all the difference in the world because when you are diagnosed and, and i don't care how much training you have i don't care what your background is i have a certain amount of training mm -hmm. and when i was diagnosed i felt as though i had been hit by a truck well that's it and and when women call me they'll the calls that i get are usually a lady saying i just left my doctor's office they gave me your name and number i'm having surgery what do I need to do? They mm -hmm. don't even know what else to ask. Right. So that's when I ask the questions. When is your surgery? What are you having done? And I help walk them through it. Now, what, you had to go through a tremendous amount of training. It wasn't just like sitting there looking at a book. 
when no. you were going through it. I, I remember you went through a lot of training. Uh, yes, I was required to have hundreds of hours of practice as a trainer. So first I had to take the training classes, which were uh, extensive, and then exams. There are written exams that you have to pass. And then you need hundreds of, hundreds of hours of actual working as a fitter, all of that before you can be certified. Mm -hmm. And you must be certified before Medicare will accredit you. Um, so because I am accredited, I can accept Medicare and I can accept insurance. And so women need to know that these items are covered by insurance. Usually not wigs. There is only one insurance company currently hmm. who covers wigs. That so, doesn't seem fair. That's my new challenge is to get wigs covered by insurance because what was amazing to me was that women are more concerned about losing their hair than they are about losing their breast and I have heard it over and over and over and it means so much to their well-being right. and their ability to heal and their ability to move on with their sure. lives because it's all about self-image. It was interesting when I was going through treatment as I said I didn't lose all my hair I lost about 30 35 percent of my hair and I was fixated on it. I can tell where I had lost it and it grew back because the curly parts are where it, it, it grew back. But I, that is what my whole thing was, was the fact that my hair, my hair didn't look like my hair, my hair didn't feel like my hair. Mm -hmm. And people were saying to me, but you have hair. And I went, yeah, but it does, you know. So, and I can't imagine what it would be like to not have hair and want a wig and not be able to afford it and and have to fight an uphill battle to try to get something that would be essential, as you say, to my own well-being. Now, let me remind our viewers again that for to get information about Patty and her wonderful, wonderful services, I'm going to put a Silver Lining Foundation's information back on your screen for you. So if you did not have an opportunity to write it down beforehand, please do so. It's 312 three four five one three two two and you're also your the second act is also a participating organization the silver lining foundation's right. outreach program and so if you access our website which is a silver lining foundation.org you'll see that in our outreach programs that patty and, and all her contact information are there because you're providing a service that is beyond essential as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. I think it is it is very important to helping women move forward. Now you are out in the community a lot. Mm -hmm. I know you and I are always running yeah, into each other. Running we into sit each other on panels. All the time. We do things together um, and we both get an awful lot of questions. What's the question you get asked the most often? I guess the biggest one is what what do I do after surgery? Will I ever look the same again? Okay. And so that's where I explained to them about the products that we talked about here, is that you can look normal again. And then I, you know, help them understand what their options are. So more and more women are having reconstruction. Right. And that is certainly a viable option. But for those women who don't want to or can't, it's nice to know that these other things are available. It, it, it certainly is. It's... Um it's very, very helpful because, you know, we think automatically, I think many people think automatically out in the community, well, you know, you have a mastectomy or a partial mastectomy and it can be reconstructed. And in many cases, mine as an example, it could not be. And um, you, I think on some level, at least initially, is like, how am I going to feel about looking in the mirror? And how I'm going to feel in my particular circumstance when my husband takes a look at me again. Now, you know my husband and I am blessed, <laughs> which is an understatement, because he told me he didn't marry my chest, he married my spirit, you know, for which I will be eternally thankful. But still, for me to be able, it took me some time to be able to look in the mirror and see what it looked like. Well, the other thing is that women who are having reconstruction are told by their doctor, okay, we're going to do immediate reconstruction. Right. And we all have our own vision of what we think immediate means. Yes, yes. But in this case, it doesn't mean you're going to leave the hospital with a breast in place. Not by any and stretch. it can take several months. And if you have chemotherapy, you often have your reconstruction halted until after chemotherapy. Right. So it can be many, many months. So there are interim products also. Right. that you can wear while your reconstruction is being done. So those are also, just because you're having reconstruction, you can still feel free to 
call a mastectomy fitter, meet with them, and talk about what your options are to hold you through what could be 6, 8, 10, 12 months sometimes until your reconstruction is done. It, it makes all the difference in the world to have you and to have these resources available. And I cannot thank you enough for coming on as our, as our regular guest <laughs> all the time. Because the information, every time you come on, I know our viewers and certainly I learn a tremendous amount about this really very significant topic that unfortunately, you know, given the numbers of women who are diagnosed annually, I mean, it, it is becoming more and more necessary as time goes on. Absolutely. So I thank you. All right, Patty, tell them who you are. Tell them the name of your company. It is Patty Cagney Sheehan, as Irish as you can get. It is Second Act. And I chose that name because of all the women who changed their look on life after cancer. And they face the second act of their life. And that's how I named it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us again. And thank you so much again for tuning in. And we'll see you next Thursday. And remember, there is always a silver lining. Thank you so much. Good evening.